Hello and welcome to the HGC or Hardcore Giveaway Gamers Club channel. My name is Daniel and this video is going to be a teardown of an ASUS uh, model AS-G20AJ-A1. Okay, we're going to replace the hard drive in this. It failed. I put a 500 gig in as a temporary drive until uh, because he was in a hurry until we could get in a two terabyte which was what he had in it prior and got that drive in cloned the software cloned the entire operating system over to that and now we're going to install it into this and decided to video this to give you guys an opportunity to see how this is opened uh, now this particular system is not the easiest one to be opened so if you're not very mechanically inclined and are the type that tries to use uh, tools that are not proper for the job I would highly recommend you take this to a licensed shop it is not the easiest thing to take apart and you can easily destroy your system doing it in an improper manner so I'm gonna let you see a little bit of that let you see the back side here Okay, so first, to start off with, you're going to have to remove a vent on the top. This is going to be directly over your heat sink on this side. This side here, you'll see there's no heat sink. You can see the heat sink through the pad, uh, through the vent, so you'll know which one you're supposed to take off. You will need a spudger of some sort. Uh, this is perfectly fine. If you want me to give you a link to one, just ask and I will put it on there. Okay, uh, put it on the description as well as attach it to the first comment. So basically what you're going to do is slide in between, lift up a little bit, and go down and pop all the little pins. If you got tape on it like this one does, you'll have to cut the tape free. <laughs> uh, there's no screw. It will pop right out and you want to do that nice and careful so you don't break these little tabs okay so I'm gonna set this off to the side make sure you keep very accurate uh, placement of where you put things alright so here in order to get this open we're gonna to need to remove a screw on this side and a screw on the other side we'll get to that in just a second let me get this to where you can see it there we go. And now let me get my screwdriver. Okay, this is just a standard Phillips screwdriver head. I'm going to remove that screw. And then we're going to take it and set it aside in a place that will not cause it to fall or be lost. Alright. <laughs> and then we're going to flip it over. And we're going to remove this screw here so that we can open the case. Okay, so when you're undoing screws, always turn them to the left. Lefty loosey, righty tidy. So turn it to the left and remove the screw. Okay. So, once you get that screw removed, set this to where this emblem is face up, and then you're going to slide it to your left, which will be toward the face of the system. There will also be this little here, so you know to slide away from it. So, put your hand on the logo and push away toward the back side, the, excuse me, the front side of the system. All right, once that happens, you can very carefully lift that up. You will see some wires attaching the face. You want to very carefully prop that up so that it don't fall on you. And then very carefully unplug these. You're going to have to grab a hold of the plastic itself and then 
get your fingernails up underneath the plastic edges of that plug and just rock it back and forth until it comes out. Okay, do the same with the next one. Now these should be marked with little tabs that say number one, number one, number two, number two. If they're not, get some tape, mark them before you unplug them. Okay, now do that and the top is completely removed and you can set that off out of the way. Okay, so to get to the hard drive, we are going to have to remove the video card. Now, as far as general cleaning and maintenance, at this point you can blow out stuff. Uh, but I would recommend actually removing this, which is your video card, before you do the clean out. You'll want to blow air in this way and then back through the fans back the other way, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until you see no more dust coming out. The number one killer of these computers, game systems included, is dust buildup not on the fan, but on the face side of your heat sink, which is where the fan blows the air through. It builds up on the face side and then comes out. So this side that you can see that's not very dirty makes it a little deceptive. The dust that kills is in here on the face side of the heatsink. All right, so we're going to need to remove the video card. Okay, I'm going to take these cords and get them out of the way as best possible. And then you're going to find three screws, one, two, and three, that you will need to remove. So where did I set it? Oh, here it is. Okay, so I'm going to remove three screws. Turn it to the left remove the screws, set them off to the side in order that you took them out. So first one will be down low, second one will be up high, and then the second one over. Now they're the same size, but you know what, if you just make a habit of putting every screw back in the exact same hole, you'll never wind up with a long screw in a short hole in which you will literally likely uh, cause it to go into the circuit board or into something that will short it out and thus destroy your system. All right, so before you go pulling this up, there's a tab in there for the circuit card. So I'm going to get you and bring you down close to it. Okay, you see that orange tab there? That locks in this circuit board, which is part of this. All right. Okay. So we're going to need to release the circuit board by pressing down on that yellow tab there. So let's get something in there. Uh, okay. You can use a pencil eraser or pencil. You can use ink pen. Whatever you like. See how I did that? I just pushed it down. That released the tab. That unlocked it so that this can be removed. All right, let's get you back up here. There we go. Okay, so we got that tab removed, and now this is capable of being removed. So we're going to very gently grab it and rock it back and forth. Until we can remove it from the casing. So hold on one second, I'll make sure I got that all the way pushed down. Okay. You want to keep a very close eye. Sometimes this circuit board will go underneath this little piece of metal over there and that would be a bad thing for you. Actually, let me go one step further here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and remove this. Let me turn this around. 
I forgot. It's been a while since I've had to do one of these. We need to remove this back plate here. So there's going to be one screw right there and one screw right here and one screw right here. So let's remove them real quick before I go breaking something. <laughs> Again, you're going to place them in order you remove them. And you're turning these to the left. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now we'll remove that lower half. This comes off just like that. We're going to set that off to the side. <coughs> with the upper so it don't get broken. Always have a nice wide open area. Okay, now we can get in here and remove this. So I'm gonna recommend that to remove it, see this large metal outcropping here? You're gonna use it and push up with your thumb. At the same time, you're gonna lift up on this side. So you're gonna use your thumb on this side, underneath this outcropping, and then lift up on this side at the same time but keep an eye on this circuit board right here. Let me point to it right here. Because if you look, let me get a good shot in here. If you look at that circuit board, it is right up against this metal thing here. If it gets up underneath this, you'll break that circuit board and you will have to buy yourself a new video card. <laughs> so you don't want that. So you're going to lift up this side first. Oops. Hold on. You're going to lift up this side first a little bit. And then you're going to lift up this side a little bit. There you go. If it looks like that board's getting in there, you can tweak this back a little bit or push back on that. But once you get it up, uh, and released in here, then you reach over to the top side, grab a hold of it, lift it up, and just kind of rock it back and forth, lifting it up, and very gently tilt it back. Okay, now you'll see here that there's a plug, it's got a little clip on it. You're gonna press down, very gently rock that back and forth, left and right, and unplug that, okay? See the little clip? All right. This, these don't always come out as easy as easily as this one did. I've already removed it once. If it's the first time you're doing this, that sucker is going to be in there super tight and is not going to want to come out. Avoid touching anything on this circuit board, especially these contacts. All right. So we're going to set that off to the side and keep it protected. Now. We need to remove this hard drive and replace it with the new one. So in order to do that, we need to unhook this ribbon cable. One, it's going to have a little bit of tape, so like a cloth tape. You're going to need to peel that back very gently. And let me get you a nice shot inside so you can see that. carefully pull that tape back so that you can get to that clip. Right. Now to undo that clip you simply let me get in there simply use a spudger directly above your finger and very gently lift it up. All right, you can use the whole surface of the spudger. I used the corner. It is not going to make a whole lot of difference, but if you haven't done this before, I would use the entire flat side of the spudger on that. All right, just in case because I don't know how 
tight you're going to pry. Now, I'm going to have to disconnect the hard drive. This ribbon cable, we just got to get it out of the way. We need to disconnect this hard drive and there's a screw right above it, right here, that's going to need to be undone. So, we're going to very carefully and without and try to not touch any of the circuit board components around it. We're going to remove the hard drive SATA cable and the power cable. So you're going to take, and like I said, avoid touching everything else. You're going to take and grab that, and we're going to rock it side to side, nice and gentle. Give it a little tug upward, continue to rock until it comes out free and clear. Uh, again, on a new system that's never been taken out, that's not going to come out easily. Now this one, you're going to do the same thing. The only thing you're going to grab a hold of the sides of the port, rock it back and forth, left and right, until it comes out. Okay, see that? Rock it back and forth until it comes out. Okay, and then down here, I don't know if you can see it. There you go. There's a screw. That is on the top side of the drive. So let's get that out of there. Okay, now I like to do my videos in real time. That way you know how long this is actually going to take. Although sometimes I will edit out uh, spots where I have to run off to get something or whatever. But you always want to know how long this is going to take. Some people make these videos and they cut out so much information on how to take it or cut out spots that will cause you to destroy your system if you don't follow it. And then you think it it's going to take a lot less time than it actually does and you get into it and you wind up <laughs> uh, destroying your system. So once you remove this screw, so pardon how long the video are, is, once you remove that screw, you can take and push this drive back. I have to get in there. It's not going to be the easiest thing in the world to do. There we go. You see that? I pushed it back. It's actually going toward where the screw was. Okay. Now, once we get that pushed back, we can take and grab a hold of this cable here and lift up the bottom half of the drive and very gently just kind of scoot it toward us, grab into the drive, and then very gently making sure you don't break that ribbon cable or anything. Lift it out of the system. All right, so now all we got to do is transfer all the metals and cables to the new drive. So let's get that done. Let me grab the new drive. Okay, I'm gonna set that off to the side. And we are going to need to remove four screws in order to remove the metal housing, which locks the drive in place. Uh, that's my screwdriver. This one probably still work. Yes. All right. So be very careful. You do not drop any of these screws into the system. I'm doing this do it on video so normally I would not do it directly over the system <laughs> all right remember we're turning these to the left okay we remove the four screws that will allow this to come right off Now we need to put the new drive on. New drive's got to go back in exactly the same as the old. Oops, sorry. The new drive's got to go back in exactly the same as the old. So you're going to put the circuit board toward the metal. 
slide that in. Make sure the uh, SATA port and power ports are facing out. And then we will be putting all four screws back in. Every screw has a purpose and a reason. Always put all your screws back in. Now, to avoid stripping screws, you want to turn it to the left like as if you're taking it out until you feel it click a little and then turn it to the right to tighten it down. When you first do this, put the first one very, very loose and then put the next one in. Lefty, click, right, tight. Do not tighten it all the way down. It's going to be nice and loose so that this case can move around and all four screws will be put in and centered. This prevents you from having to force a screw in, left and then back right. That prevents you from forcing to have to put a screw in. And I got some camera wire in the way. That prevents you from having to put a force a screw in and all four screws come in and now you tighten them down. Now this is not a car, but you want to give them a liberal snug down and it doesn't matter how you do it, you can do it right bottom corner, left corner, up and back or just all the way around. So long as you go around, once you get them all tight, go around one last time and snug them all one more time and there. Now, uh, you want it tight enough so that vibrations don't loosen them up but yet not so overly tight that next time you try to pull them out you'll strip the screws out in order to do it. This is not a car. You don't need to torque these down to any foot pounds. So uh, just snug and tight. All right, so now we need to put in all our cables. So we're going to orientate this drive with this one. And I'm going to set this in here without touching any of the electronics. And I'm going to very carefully unplug power. I'm going to set that off to the side. And then I'm going to unplug the SATA cable. Some people call it SATA. There's all kind of different names. I'm not concerned about the specific names. Most of you are not going to know or even care about the specific name, so I'm not going to call it by its specific name. This is not electronics education. This is how to swap out a drive. <laughs> all right. So them are put in now. And now we need to put this back in to the computer. So we're going to get this in very carefully get this back in here and we're going to manipulate it around the cable and around the power cords and everything until we get it in there slide it down make sure it's all the way forward push down top and bottom and then slide it back into place so that that screw can be put in okay so now we're going to put that screw back in so let me move that hard drive off to the side because it's good and I'm going to use it for something else later <laughs> because I only put it in his system for a temporary drive okay so now I need to put the screw in there I'll make sure I got the right one yep yeah. okay so now before you put attach anything you're going to get that screw back in there. This is where a screwdriver with magnetic tip comes in handy. You're going to get it in place, turn it to the left like as if you're taking it out until you feel a click. That's the threads lining up. You hear that? And then turn it to the right to tighten it down. This ensures that the drive is in its exact right position. We're just going to slightly snug that. Okay, now that that's done, uh, before I go plugging any of this other stuff in, I'm going to start with the ribbon cable. And we're going to make sure and take our time and make sure that that is properly into that retainer clip. And this is not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but we need to make sure that that's all the way in and flush. All right, there's a little black line across the top side of that. When you flip that down, you'll be able to see the little black line directly in front of the blue line, that uh, the blue ribbon, 
and it should be equal all the way across. So I'm going to give you a real close look at that. So this is what that ribbon cable should look like when it's properly installed. You see the top side of that clip and then the little black line with the X's. See that little black line? That is equal all the way across the port and that means it is all the way in. Okay. And then you're going to take and put this tape back on. This tape will help it if you drop it or anything. It will help keep that from coming out or shifting. But obviously if you drop this system you're liable to break it anyway. So it's kind of an oxymoron. <laughs> All right. So we got that in and we are now going to reinstall the power and the SATA cable. SATA cable is real simple. Plug it in and push down. Power cable, real simple. Plug it in exactly where it came out. Okay, and then I'm going to seat these cables back in your places as best possible. Don't oh, don't push everything really super hard. Uh, it's gonna pretty much go right back where it was very easily. Okay, so now we need to put back in the, the video card. This is a major point where you want to be absolutely certain you got everything in right. So you're gonna first you're gonna reattach your power. Make sure that's all the way plugged in and this locking clip is locked in. That lets you know that it's all the way in. And then you're going to very carefully, and remember this circuit board is poking out. You're going to be very careful. And you're going to just set this in and then this cable here is going to be in your way. So you're going to have to kind of manipulate it so that it goes in. And then very carefully manipulate that back down into the system very carefully making certain that this circuit board does not scrub on this you don't want to knock any components off and very gently get that back into place now don't shove it down from here there's all of them pins has got to go into that circuit so you're going to push down from here top and bottom like that. Okay, and then you're going to take something that's non metallic and you're going to lift that little locking tab back up, and now it's in place. Now we can put our screws back in. Okay, so we got three screws. We'll put it in, turn it to the left until it lines up the threads, turn it back right to tighten it down. Do that again on the next one. Lefty for a little while and righty to tighten it down. And then we're going to the next one. Our screws. Remember, don't leave screws out. You, you're thinking, oh, I'll leave this one out. It'll make it easier for me to get it open next time. Don't do that. There, there's a very good reason as to why they put these screws in here. Okay. So now we need to put the back guard back on. On the back guard, you'll notice that there's tabs here, here, and here. You want to make sure they get lined up. You're going to make sure these tabs here get lined up. So you're going to slide that down and very gently manipulate that back into place. Okay, just like that. It's all the way in place. You can see where the screws go. And now we're going to put the screws back in. Turn 
it a little bit to the left and then turn it to the right to tighten it after the threads line up. Once you get the threads to line up, you will never cross thread it. Turn it to the left until you get the threads to line up. You feel the click, you turn it to the right, it will go right in easy peasy. You will never cross thread another screw. Now, again, these are just going through plastic into the case, so there's no torque value on these, on any of these. You just want to snug them down, give them a slight extra turn to snug it up, and it's done. Okay, you're if you're an automotive, yeah, yeah, you're used to torquing stuff down to so many foot-pounds. This is not a car. <laughs> okay, so now we need to put the top back on. All right. When you go to put the top back on, ensure that this is all the way in and oriented in the right direction. All right. So you got your heat sink here. And as you can see, this side here is going to be where the heat sink in is, and this side here has got a full vent. So you're going to want this end up so that when it goes down, it'll go toward the heat sink. All right. So let me kind of prop this up here for a second, very carefully. I'm going to set that right there, lean it up against the screen of my monitor, and now I'm going to very cautiously check the numbers. Okay, I'm going to start with number one, and I'm going to find number one here, that's number two, here's number one, okay, and then I'm going to verify that it's being plugged in properly, and then plug it in, make sure it's all the way down, and then do the same with the next one. Now, even though I already know I plugged in one, I'm gonna double check number two and number two, even though I just checked one, because you never know when you look at something wrong, okay, and accidentally do it. So that'll be a way to catch if you made a mistake, if you check to make sure the second plug that you plug in actually matches two. So that's a, a, a extra check. All right. So now this wire you don't want just laying in here because if it gets up in this fan, it'll stop this thing from spinning. If it gets up in this fan, it's going to stop it from spinning. You want to make sure that this is down in here, and the wires will be out of the way when this goes down. So I'm going to let's see, just kind of snug them all up along through here. Okay. See this. Push that all the way forward, lay them in there, and then the excess, you're going to get it to lay right down in there, and then you're going to just kind of set that over. Now this, this wire is the wire to my camera. All right, and then we're going to take, and very carefully, set this back on. It's going to slide, so it's going to go all the way down, and then you're going to slide it. So right now, the back with the HDMI ports and all the USBs is facing toward me, and this is at the back of the system. So this is the front of the system. You're going to take your hand, put it on that, and pull it toward you, and that'll lock it into place. And then. You're going to very carefully reinstall the screw right there. Let's get that screw in there. Okay, you're going to turn it to the left until you feel it click and line up the threads, and then you're going to turn it to the right until it goes all the way down. And once it stops, give it a little tiny snug, not a lot, and we're done. So now we can put on the vent. We're going to line up them little clips and everything, and that will go straight in and down.
make sure it's all the way down and in. There we go. Done. And then flip it over and put in your final screw, which is right here. to see that from the angle I'm in. Okay, so get that screw in there, turn it to the left, and you'll hear it click, and then you'll turn it to right. So listen closely. There we go. Now we're going to turn it and screw it down. And snug it slightly. It's going into plastic. It's just to hold that still. It's, it's not major, so don't try to tighten it down like an automotive car. <laughs> and that's it. We're all done. We got this all done and it is now ready to be fired up and tested. Make sure the operating system and boots and everything. And we're good. So uh, I set up a website strictly for my YouTube channel uh, for all of my giveaways. My biggest giveaway is going to be a thousand dollars. So go check that out. Stay safe, happy gaming.